What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the A24 Archive. This is the segment on my channel where I go back through A24's entire catalog from the first film they ever produced all the way till whenever I get current. And I'm very excited to talk about the movie today because this is a film that I have watched a couple of times. This is from a director who has now worked with A24 a few times, and that is director David Lowry. And this is a film that I feel like when it was first released got really mixed reactions. I feel like people either really adored this movie or they absolutely hated it. And I remember watching it the first time and really just being surprised by it and, and what it was setting out to accomplish and how much differently it was structured than a lot of the films that I have seen previously. And so I was really excited to revisit it this time around and I'm looking forward to telling you a little bit about it today. And the film I'm gonna be discussing with you is A Ghost Story. A Ghost Story is directed by David Lowry. Recently deceased, a white sheeted ghost returns to his suburban home to console his bereft wife, only to find that in his spectral state he has become uns stuck in time, forced to watch passively as the life he knew and the woman he loves slowly slips away. So as I said, I've seen this movie before. Uh, this is, I think, the third, maybe fourth time I've watched this film. And I absolutely love this movie. This would be in contender for one of my favorites that A24 has produced in their career. And it's a, it's a very poignant film for a multitude of reasons. And I'm excited to tell you about it today. So the story is very simply this. At the beginning of the movie, we are introduced to two characters who don't even really have names. Uh, they're are credited with initials online and they're played by Casey Affleck and Rooney Mara and they're living this life at home and we get snapshots into their life we get long sequences of them just cuddling together in bed they have these very simple conversations together and it's really just a beautiful portrayal of two people living together who love each other and one morning Rooney Mara gets up out of bed Casey Affleck is leaving to go to work and he gets in a car accident outside of their house and dies on impact and the next scene is Rooney Mara's character at the hospital she goes there, sees his body, leaves the hospital, and we see him pop up on the table. He has a sheet draped over his body with two eye holes cut out, kind of like a Halloween ghost. And he ends up heading back home. And the entire film is he is forced to live out his life in this house as a ghost. He can't interact with his wife. He can't do anything to communicate with her. And essentially watching this person live through grief right in front of our eyes. We watch Rooney Mara's character deal with the loss of her husband. We see this character have to live out eternity as a, a ghost and thinking about what he went through in life and thinking about what's to come for him next in the afterlife and the movie asks a ton of questions throughout and it's one of the most fascinating explorations of grief that I've ever watched this movie is so much less of a narrative feature film and so much more of an art house piece when you're watching this movie the narrative structure is so thin it just feels like you're you're looking at these really beautifully crafted photographs and art pieces in an art gallery that's really what this movie feels like as a whole and it ponders a lot of questions that i think are worth diving into but the first thing i want to talk about in this movie is the cinematography i love the aspect ratio in this film there are moments that feel like photos being taken on a film camera that are just so beautiful to look at i feel like this is one of the a24 films that i could say is like an every frame is a painting type of a movie where every single scene you can just stare at it for hours and pick little details up in the frame. You can tell David Lowry had a lot of intentionality into what he wanted to convey in this movie and the things that he wanted to say in this movie. And I think it's incredibly impressive. And on every rewatch, I've become more impressed with the cinematography and the production design and just the way shots are structured. The performances in this movie are really fantastic. Obviously, Casey Affleck's not in the movie for very long. Rooney Mara is really the central focus. I think Rooney Mara does a phenomenal job, especially because she doesn't have a lot of dialogue in the film. So much is about her initial gut reaction to grief. There's a scene that everyone talks about in this movie that is a long take sequence where she essentially eats an entire pie sitting on, a flo on the floor that someone came and delivered to her after her husband died. There are people that have called it comical. There are people that, that said it's tasteless. There's people that say that uh, it's not well 
that it wasn't well thought out. I think the complete opposite. I think that it's brilliant and I think it's very realistic. People deal with grief in a multitude of ways. And there are a lot of people in the world who stress eat or they eat when they're depressed. And I think that it was a very raw and realistic portrayal of someone who is just so fed up with everything that they're just like, they see this pie at first, it's almost like they're trying to find some sense of enjoyment in it. And then like, if they take one bite and it tastes good, it's like, can I find something that keeps me in that state so that I just don't feel miserable for forever? And I think that finding comfort in the small things is something that David Lowry portrays beautifully beautifully in this movie, trying to find some sense of normalcy. I love, there's so many sequences in this movie I could discuss in length, but there's a scene where she's listening to music on her headphones and thinking about her husband because her husband was a musician who worked on either producing or creating music. And she's listening to one of his songs and the way that it cuts back and, and is edited from the flashback sequence into the, the modern day, it's just so brilliant and very realistic as to a person reminiscing on something like that. And when you're watching it, you almost forget you're watching a movie. It feels so much more of like a lived experience. And she has her hand kind of laying back behind her and her husband's ghost is standing behind her and you can see like the sheet touching the floor almost touching her hand but like there's just that bit of separation that they can't be together because he's dead and I, it's just so beautiful and thoughtful and then past to the relationship experience between the two characters there's so much about what people leave behind in a space and what a space means to someone this ghost sees his w wife move out of the house and new people move into the house the house being destroyed at one point i think it's really interesting and thought-provoking to think about you know items people leave, leave behind when they die or a space someone lives in anytime someone moves into a house that has already been lived in there are memories that exist from other people who have lived there prior and i think the way david lowry explores that throughout the film is really fascinating one of my favorite bands of all time is a band called La dispute and they made a record called rooms of the house that most of the album is discussing like you know grief and trauma and and losing a loved one and there's a specific song on the record called objects in space that is all about when you lose someone and there's an item or a, a room in a house or something that is representative of that person and the things that they did and the life that they live that one simplistic item can bring up an entire slew of memories and Inside you as a person and make you relive all of these memories again and I think David Lowry does that in this movie there's so much reflective on that and, and what a person leaves behind after they're gone it's so poignant and beautiful and it's gut-wrenching the third act in this movie still blows me away just visually and and what it represents the last shot especially of this movie is mind-blowing the score to this film is absolutely beautiful I just won't play it on repeat constantly because it, it just puts you in this headspace of thoughtfulness and it really just brings back a lot of the themes and ideas that the movie is conveying and this is not going to be a film for everyone it's very slow paced it plays out almost in real time in moments but the reason why is it's meant to make you as a viewer uncomfortable it's meant to make you watch something that feels very real and it's made to make you feel this grief and I think that it's a grief that a lot of us have experienced or someday will experience. We all have or are going to lose someone at some point in our lives and it's going to be a difficult experience or it has been a difficult experience and I think making a movie like this that everyone can relate to and understand is just is really awesome and I think David Lowry is one of my favorite filmmakers. He consistently puts out a amazing movies especially when he's working with a24 if you've never seen a ghost story and you're a fan of a24 or you're a fan of art house cinema this is a must watch so if you've seen a ghost story did you love it did you hate it leave me a comment down below let me know what you thought i think this movie is absolutely brilliant every time i re-watch it i love it even more as always if you like the video and subscribe to the channel helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for i'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future and as always everyone thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your your day.